we'll discuss macular degeneration here. Macular degeneration is a chronic condition affecting the eyes. We don't know what causes it, but we do know that it causes progressive central visual loss. And this is something that is commonly seen in older patients. And the older they are, the more likely they are to get it. Uh, this is not something that we see in young adults or in children. This is age-related. And I, uh, I should have maybe called this age-related macular degeneration, uh, but you should assume when somebody is referring to macular degeneration in a patient that it's typically age-related macular degeneration. Uh, that's what they're referring to. So this is actually the most common cause of permanent visual loss in the elderly. And by elderly, I mean 60 plus. It's also referred to, as I mentioned, as age-related macular degeneration or AMD. There are two different distinct types of AMD that you need to be aware of uh, because they will affect treatment. So the more common one is dry AMD. It's also called geographic AMD for reasons I'll tell you in a little bit. And it's associated with the development of these characteristic yellow uh, nodules, uh, which are called drusen. And these are uh, cholesterol-based uh, material, cellular debris, that accumulates uh, in between the uh, retinal pigment epithelium and the underlying choroid. So this uh, is, accounts for 90% of AMD cases. In contrast, wet or exudative AMD is more severe, this is faster progressing, and it's associated not as much with drusen as much as it's associated with neovascularization in the choroid. And this invariably results in hemorrhage and that's going to cause scarring and ischemia. And this accounts for 10% of AMD cases. Now I'll just say off the bat that drusen are a very common finding and the presence, the presence of drusen does not imply that the patient has or necessarily will develop AMD. Uh, these are some, uh, drusen is something that you see in older people's eyes. So it does not indicate that the patient has AMD or necessarily will develop AMD. However, the more drusen, the more numerous the drusen spots appear in a patient's eyes, the more likely they are to get AMD. But it's not... It's not uh, for sure. I mean, a patient can have drusen and never develop AMD. Uh, so I don't want you to think that these yellow drusen that you see in every patient is going to necessitate uh, a diagnosis of AMD or impending AMD. These are something that can be seen in, uh, in normal patients. Typically, macular degeneration presents as an older patient who's complaining of blurry vision because it's affecting the macula. And this is in contrast to retinal detachment, where retinal detachment will uh, present as a patient complaining of uh, a loss of peripheral vision, but the vision that they do have is clear. So this is blurry vision, and they can also see dark spots in the visual field a lot of times, and those are called scotomas. And this worsens over time. This is a progressive disease. The symptoms are blurred central vision, scotomas, something called uh, metamorphopsia. And that is where normally we see straight lines when we look at straight objects. In patients with macular degeneration, their vision is distorted and straight lines may become curvy looking. Uh, so it's really just distorted vision. They can also have, and they do have, a dramatic decrease in visual acuity. Uh, at least two levels on the Snellen chart, and that affects uh, the ability to read. And it also, because they have the blurriness and the metamorphopsia, affects their ability to distinguish faces. They also have decreased contrast sensitivity when viewing colored uh, things. So seeing dark red versus pink may be difficult for them uh, to distinguish. The associated risk factors, of course, are age, also hypertension, obesity, elevated cholesterol, Caucasian race, smoking, and UV exposure. To, so to, in order to diagnose this, you have to refer the patient to ophthalmology. Uh, they need to do an indirect dilated uh, uh, exam on the uh, patient's eyes. Uh, so you, you need to refer the patient to ophthalmology for a definitive diagnosis. However, there are some tests that you can do 
that will raise the suspicion of AMD even beyond the patient's characteristic symptoms. So uh, the Snellen test, it would be important to do any time a patient complains of blurry vision to know exactly what their visual acuity is. And AMD patients will show reduced visual acuity compared to previous tests. There's another thing called the Ampsler grid, and all it is is, uh, is a grid with straight horizontal and diagonal lines. And a normal patient should view those as straight uh, horizontal and uh, sorry, horizontal and vertical lines. Uh, but a patient with macular degeneration will see distortions. So this is how a person with macular degeneration may see. Uh, they oftentimes will have blurry vision on the area of focus. Um, they also can have this distortion present too. So here's the Snellen test. And then the Amsler grid. So really simple looking. But these are uh, horizontal and vertical lines. You have them look at it from reading distance, focus on the black dot, and then you ask them, are there any blurry spots? Are there any spots that are distorted that don't look like they're going horizontal or vertical? And if the answer is yes, then that raises the suspicion of, uh, of AMD. So this is how it may appear to an AMD patient. So this is an example. Uh, if you were to do indirect ophthalmoscopy, uh, how you uh, would see age-related macular degeneration if it's the dry AMD. And these little plaque appearing uh, nodules are not cotton wool spots, uh, they are drusen. And you can see that it's right over the macula. Here's your macula right here. There's your optic disc and the macula and they're on the macula. There's more. Here's more here. So the wet AMD uh, is associated with scarring and bleeding. So you can see here that there's scarring. That's that brownish blackish tissue. There's also area of active inflammation. And there is uh, bleeding, right? uh, hemorrhages here. You also see drusen possibly here, but uh, drusen can be seen in uh, anybody. So here uh, again, there's scar over the or over the macula, and then there's also uh, hemorrhaging. Another test that's done is the fluorescent angiography, and the fluorescent angiography, all it does is it looks where uh, it looks to see where the blood is in the eye. So it's just like any other angiogram. This is a normal fluorescent angiography. Uh, you can see uh, that there's not a whole lot around the, uh, you can't really see a whole lot of anything around the uh, macula, and that's how it should be. It should be a kind of darkish spot. Uh, as opposed to in wet AMD, if you do this angiogram, you'll see areas of bleeding. And that's these bright spots here around the macula. Because remember, wet AMD, what is it? It's abnormal uh, vascularization, angiogenesis in the macular area. So in order for a definitive diagnosis, like I said, they need to be referred to an ophthalmologist for ophthalmoscopy. Uh, and this is important not only to definitively diagnose that indeed the patient has AMD, but also to differentiate what type it is. And uh, as I mentioned, the fluorescent angiography uh, is often performed in patients with suspected wet AMD to visualize the abnormal vasculature. As far as treatment, it's kind of unfortunate. There's not a whole lot of really good treatment out there that really stops this. Uh, all you can do is slow it down. So all patients should have a regular follow-up with optometry, and that is uh, mostly to monitor the, uh, the progression. So for patients who have dry AMD, there's really nothing we can do. Uh, there's no effective medical or surgical treatment that exists right now. However, 
You should refer them to occupational therapy because they can facilitate care to improve the patient's quality of life. There's adaptive things that can be done as far as changing things around the house to minimize the risk of falls and accidents and stuff. Wet AMD, there are two approaches that can be taken, but they don't cure the AMD. They just slow progression. So the first is photodynamic therapy, and this is typically done in patients who are newly diagnosed, and this uses lasers to coagulate the abnormal vessels and slow progression. There's also the anti-VEGF agents. VEGF is a signal protein that stimulates angiogenesis. So it makes sense that with wet AMD, where you have uh, abnormal angiogenesis, to give something that would stop that. And these agents inhibit VEGF, uh, but they need to be administered intravitreally, and it's kind of a pain in the butt because you have to go every four to six weeks to have these administered. Some of the agents include bevacizumab, ranibizumab, those are both uh, monoclonal antibodies. Bevacizumab is probably the most commonly used. It's Avastin. You also see it used in some chemotherapies, especially colon cancer. Uh, there's another one called pegaptinib. That is a uh, peptide, uh, uh, small uh, oligoprotein, uh, peptide aptamer, they call it. Um, and then there's uh, zipofliversept, and that is a, an Ig fusion protein. But they all uh, are effective. They're administered intravitreally, and they inhibit the uh, continued angiogenesis, or at least slow it. And then another thing that uh, should be done in all patients, not just wet AMD, uh, is oral vitamins and antioxidants, and they have been shown to slow progression. So uh, you'll also, and this is why you send the patient off to uh, uh, occupational therapy. Occupational therapy will help them uh, with strategies that they can do around the house to help with their quality of life. So things such as keeping the home brightly lit, important for, uh, for uh, safety purposes. Precaution with stairs. Uh, a lot of times we'll give them a cane or a walker. A lot of these are patients are elderly women. And so we're also concerned about bone breaks from falls. So we'll want them to have something to stabilize them. Uh, objects with larger symbols, so you can see here, this would be a phone that uh, would be great for somebody with macular degeneration. Magnification devices are useful. They, there's portable magnification devices as well as these, uh, these stationary ones. Color coding pill bottles to help them so they don't get their, uh, so they don't get their pills mixed up. And this is useful because they can still see color. Uh, they just can't see uh, letters when they read. Uh, and then a talking glucometer can be useful in the patients who uh, use glucometers. Uh, and then beyond that, home care and disability and ADA counseling if they're still working, which the majority of patients are retired. So if you want to get an idea of how, why a person with macular degeneration can't read, what you can do is take a book, look at it, and then turn it to the side so it's not exactly in your central vision but in your peripheral visual fields, and then try to read it. You can see that there are lines, and you can see that it's black and white or whatever color it is, but you can't read it because you can't make out the letters. You can't see that much detail. The macula is responsible for processing detailed vision. And so because uh, when the macula becomes uh, diseased, your ability to, uh, to see details declines, and so that's why they can't read. So these are some things that they can do. But beyond that, all you, should know for the, all you need to know for the USMLE is the symptoms of macular degeneration, uh, the fact that they lose central vision, they have scotomas, uh, that this has been progressive, and then to know how to diagnose it. And that's via an ophthalmoscope, uh, indirect ophthalmoscopy, and to know that dry AMD is the most common one. It has the characteristic drusen overlying the macula. And these are yellow spots. Uh, and then there's wet AMD, which is uh, 
neovascularization and hemorrhaging. So beyond that, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, write a response below. See you next time.